John Neal here. It's Sunday, the 20th of March, 2022, and uh, it's sort of near the spring equinox. And for some people, the new year. Uh, I'm in Higham Village, and I'm going to explore the last part of this uh, railway that goes up towards Shackerston. Well, I've come to the village of Higham on the Hill in Leicestershire and there's a piece of ground near the disused railway line. If I swing around this way, you can see the new houses they built down this end and there's uh, another one of these um, uh, drainage ponds they put, which are great. They're safe, they're fenced off and uh, it's a, a wildlife habitat. Very nice too. If we swing back around this way though, what I'm most interested in is this building behind the fir tree because that is the old railway station and the railway line progresses north from Nuneaton all the way up to Shackerston and off in that direction off towards Derbyshire actually where it served the local communities and brought coal from some of the coal fields there as well. What I'm most interested in I'll focus on I think is the uh, the architecture of the the buildings. There's one or two fascinating stories and I'll end up at Shackerston where the railway is still back in use and being used by the battlefield uh, line. Much of the ground around these old railway stations is used for light engineering units like here at Higham on the Hill. So I'm just going to make my way up the uh, hill here to the uh, bridge over the old railway and uh, I'm just going to poke my head over the top here very quickly because these folk can be a little bit um, sensitive about people sneaking up on them. And you can see it's a bit of a higgledy piggledy sort of a setup. And there's one or two of these along the way. The patches of land being bought from, I don't know who it would be from, the railway company, the council, and uh, they set up shop and uh, do whatever they do. Right, let's move on. I'm now entering Stoke Golding, a little village where the farm shop is that we frequent here on the left. Very good stuff in there. And this is the railway bridge for the disused railway and ahead is also the road bridge going over the canal but if we turn left here it will be clear that there are a number of light industrial units established on the grounds around the station here. Well here I'm at Stoke Golding and the church you can hear ringing its bells which is a lovely sound very traditional and this is uh, where the old station was and I think this building is probably a renovated part of uh, the station and certainly this one is. Uh, hello there. So when was this building originally built on, on the railway? Well, I, I don't know but I think it's eight, I think on the blue plaque it said 1873 but I think it was 1865. Yeah. Yeah, but well, they were magnificent buildings all the way along here as well. Yeah. And I was trying to work out the significance of the railway because when it was built mid 19th century, um, it must have been such a terrific advance. Yeah. I oh. only remember one when my dad bought the house in '60, whatever it was, '64. Yeah, um, there was I think I'd be 17, and there was a train every midnight, one at midnight, and one at half past six or six in the morning, <laughs> full, full of coal. Coming from... Diesel, Diesel's Ashby. Right? Ashby direction. The coal, the coal fields, yeah. 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 Taking it to where, exactly, do you think? Well, the Neaton um, marshalling yard by Trent Valley. Yeah. There was a big marshalling yard there yeah. where, it, where it joined the, wherever it was, Birmingham. Yep, yeah, sure. 
Yeah. But Dudlington, where the crossroads in Dudlington, there was two bridges. And the guy down there, he bought Landock Bridge Railways. I think he paid £50 an acre for it. But the proviso that he knocked bridges down. Right. Yeah. They, they didn't want to re keep on repairing them. Of course not, no. But they took him knocking down, I told you. Yeah, but it's these angles, look at that. I mean, that alone is just quite fascinating. I'm getting close to Shenton Railway Station here. And it's uh, quite a fascinating one because it's the start, or the end if you like, of the um, Battlefield uh, Railway uh, restoration, if you like. And um, it's uh, quite interesting because the buildings here have been um, restored, kept, rebuilt and copied. And the first bit is, as usual, the railway and the canal tend to follow each other. And this is, whoops, there's a pussycat. That's over the canal. And uh, over that way is the line of the Ashby Railway. So let's pull in here and have a closer look at Shenton Station. This is Station House, apparently, and I'm not quite sure. I presume this could be the Station Master's House, but that's one of one, two, three, four buildings we want to look at here. Well, this Shenton Station is obviously built for passengers, uh, but the passenger uh, facility finished in 1931. It was goods trains only until 1971, when it was closed altogether, and the Battlefield Heritage uh, organization now run it from here from Shenton through to Shackerston and they run the trains at weekends just for um, tourist purposes back and forth it's about six miles long and you can see there are two tracks here and this means that they can uncouple the uh, the engine whether the diesel or steam take it down the far end bring it around all the carriages to the other end and then drag it all the way back again This is the lamp room at Shenton Station, which is one of the original buildings here. You can just see the station master's house in the background. And it was designed by John Holloway Sanders, who lived from 1825 to 1888. And he designed many of the buildings along this route, including a small uh, station in the Neaton Abbey Street railway station, but also the one we'll look at, which is also Bosworth Railway Station, Shackerston, where the end of this line is, and these at Shenton Railway Station. There are still some signs here of the old pottery. There's a sign on its side, and these hanging terracotta pots show the design style of the potter with this white slipwork as decoration on the outside. Very pretty. But let's just take a trip over to the other side of the tracks to this uh, station building over here because it's a little bit fascinating and isn't all that you expect it to be. It certainly looks the part and it looks authentic but it holds a secret and that is it was never built here in the first place. Let me read from this notice on the platform on the left lower down it starts the current station itself is not the original building. It was rescued from Humberstone Road, Leicester, where it once stood. It lay derelict for many years after being taken out of service as a passenger station. As a Grade 2 listed building, it had to be preserved. 
but British Rail did not have sufficient funds for such an operation. A buyer was looked for. Eventually it was sold to Leicestershire County Council for £1. It was moved brick by brick to its new home at Shenton, where it would serve as an information point for the battlefield and southern terminus building for the railway. The last building I want to tell you about is this one over the other side in the car park, which is a toilet block, but it's a modern building and it's been designed to be in harmony with this old building, which was originally from Leicester anyway. But I, So it's quite a convoluted story of the various buildings that are here. Some original, some copied, some moved. And uh, who would have thought it? And over this way, I can only presume there was space over here where there would be more sidings and this wonderful bridge is for the farmer to move his cattle from one side to the other without going over the railway and quite a magnificent bridge it is too it's not in use now in fact you can't get onto it at all i presume it'd be dangerous and it's fallen apart a bit but uh, quite a magnificent structure just to get the cattle across from one side of the railway to the other. And then you can see right over in the distance, this is really the, uh, the section which is completely unused, other than being a path here, right the way down to Nuneaton. And in the distance, you just can't quite see where this railway line goes over the canal. And if you walk from the canal pathway here up to the path by the railway line you can see the amazing engineering that's gone into this bridge. This is one of the fine steam trains that run on the Shackleton line during the summer months at weekends. What a wonderful sight it must have been back in the day particularly with passengers before 1931. One thing I have to say is I do like a chimney on a building and this has got one or two there which are really quite nice and when they reproduced this in a modern form with this toilet block they made a very good job really but there's no chimneys which is a shame but there again they didn't need them because it hasn't got that sort of heating system but it would have been nice to have a chimney. Further along the line we come to the station at Market Bosworth. I was told that during the Second World War, this was a fuel dump, a storage for the fuels for the armed forces. And had it been blown up, it would have burned for a long time. But this is a, a wonderful collection of old rolling stock and signals. This is a photograph I found of a locomotive called the Mayflower that came through in 2011, which is 12 years ago. And there you can see the same signal box as in the previous picture. This is Market Bosworth Station, and it seems that the station house here is turned into another function, and that's a car mechanics lot and car sales room. Uh, but there is a big, quite modern looking railway carriage there. They've taken some old concrete sleepers here and made a barrier to this driveway. You never know what you're going to find here. There's a lot of old rolling stock here and I'm thinking this is a really ancient looking wagon. Look at that. Amazing. I'd like to think it was one of the original coal wagons that went down all the way to Nuneaton, which I've mentioned before. There were 90,000 of them in a week that made it <laughs> through the uh, marshalling yards at Nuneaton. Whether that was one of them, I'd like to think so. Let's put it that way. Well, I guess this locomotive is not in operation, but look at it, it's magnificent almost in its skeletal form, <laughs> which is remarkable. But this is what these railways are about, is acquiring this old stock 
and trying to make the best of it. But look at the work they must have to go into doing this. Yeah, look at the size of this shed. It must have been quite a station, this. but I can tell that these rails have been used this one more so than this one because they've got marks on where the rust has been taken away well this is Market Bosworth station which is a lot more than I thought it was going to be never been down it before and uh, I'm just going to make my way along to the last station that I'm going to look at the railway line goes on towards Ashby but it, uh, this part of the railway that's used still for pleasure purposes uh, finishes at Shackerston, where I know there's a, all the engines are and probably a bigger concern than we've got here. So let's move on over there. have Shackerston railway station and the Ashby canal running towards it and then turning right at a sharp angle and the small river which goes underneath the canal and that rather curious bridge. This gentleman's name is Kevin, who's one of the volunteers on the Shackleton Battlefield line, and he very kindly offered some comments about the history of the railway. So what what role did this station play in the in the war then? Was this something special? Yeah, was well, it well, a lot of stuff happened here. During the war, all the production of vehicles, armoured vehicles and stuff from Coventry and Birmingham, yeah. was shipped out by a train at night and offloaded here. Wow. And parked yeah. under the trees on the the estate. Yeah. And then shipped out where it was needed from here. Yeah, it was a dispersal point. Yeah, it was a dispersal point. Yeah. And I found I found that out when I was trying to dig dig some holes for some uh, to put in some posts. <laughs> and, I, and I took about fifteen blows with a pickup to so actually get in to break the ground surface. Yeah. And just turned around, looked, said, "Yeah, well." Turned around, I could sit. He said, "Don't know. We'll join the war." He said, "There's a lot of tanks and armoured vehicles rumbled across that." Wow. I thought, well, that explains why the grounds were well packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, it did take some breaking through. Yeah. Anyway, this is the end of the video. Hope you liked it and uh, please subscribe and you know, hit the button, it's gotta be done. And uh, I'll see you again next time or you'll see me, more to the point. Okay, bye-bye. And I'll leave you with some beautiful aerial shots of the delightful little village of Shackerston in Leicestershire.